I am Araceli, a wealth advisor, real estate investor in the United States and Canada, and creator of Wealthy Women in Real Estate. Every week, I meet with Colette, a real estate broker and a real estate investor in Canada. We come together to talk about all things real estate investing and how to increase your wealth. Join us. Welcome everyone. This is Araceli, Transition Wealth Advisor and Real Estate Investor in the U.S. and Canada. My chat with Colette today, it's a very interesting subject. So Colette, can you introduce yourself and tell us what we're talking about today? Of course. Hi, everybody. My name is Colette Raba and I am a real estate broker in the GTA. I like working West End, anything, uh, Etobicoke, Mississauga, Burlington, Brampton, Oakville. I know that's in no specific order, but that's West End GTA. Yeah. Um, today, Araceli and I get this question all the time, all the time. People want to know when is the best time to buy an income property. And uh, we have a very good show for you today. So I hope you subscribe. I hope you like. I hope you ask your questions to us because this is what we're here for. We want to answer your questions. So you go first. What do you think? When is the best time to buy an income property? Okay. So first is you want to want to have an investment property. Yeah. Let's just say you're already in that idea. Like exactly. You, you because I tell you, for my, you know my story that I didn't really want to buy an income property. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know how it worked. But I kind of, after the transition that I have after my divorce, I wanted to have something that could provide some security and that provide some kind of income for me. And yeah, that's a very... It's an investment property. Yes, and that's a very good point. That one point right there is when you are interested to buy an income property because like the, the, the one thing that we always say on the show and with each other and with our clients is, first of all, you have to want to do it. Second of all, you have to be educated and, and know what it is. Like you just don't fly by the seat of your pants and say, okay, I want to do this and I have money in my pocket to burn. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to, to, you know, a lot of moving parts that you have to figure out before you buy, right? So Absolutely. that's another point. You got to do a little bit of research, talk to the experts like Araceli and I, we can let you know what it's like to be either a long-term uh, investor or short-term investor or fix and flip. There's a lot of different ways of um, having an income property too. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing is obviously you have to be financially ready. If you know that you have maximized your register accounts and you have extra money, maybe because you have two incomes coming in, maybe you got an inheritance, maybe you got something extra and you know that you need to put that money to work, then that's, in my opinion, when you are ready or the best time to start investing in real estate. I have a question for you too, because yeah. I get this question all the time. And it's a very hard question to answer when people say, hey, I have my residential home. Mm -hmm. Now, should I use it to leverage it to buy an income property? So this is always, this is sort of a, a gray area in my opinion, because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't want to get, let's say, you know, the rents don't come in or if the renovation is too big and they have to resell it, they don't want to put their own personal home at risk. So how do you feel about that? If somebody says, hey, I want to use my, um, my HELOC, my home equity line of credit mm -hmm. to buy an income property, what do you say to them about that? Well, first of all, the, the, the assessment has to come in and the stronger you are financially, that means you have enough income coming in to cover all your expenses and you have, let's say, lots of equity in, the, in your principal residence. That's a good indication. Uh, so therefore you have a large HELOC. And then the next thing is you need to put to crunch the numbers. The yeah. important thing is where you want to buy, how much are you going to spend? And can you carry that debt moving forward? If, right. if something happens, right. Like knowing exactly. your numbers with the rents coming in, you have to give yourself a little contingency to say, okay, uh, maybe I'm not going to get rent between the two renters. You know, somebody moves out, somebody moves in. It could be a couple months. Can I carry it? Will I be able to pay the mortgage without that income? So it's a very, you don't have to say, I'm going to pay for it 24 seven. Yeah. But if it's something that you have that contingency, it's like, what do you do with your, do you do a 10%? Well, 
Well, it um, depends. Usually I have a vacancy, um, vacancy rate rate uh, about eight to ten percent that is pretty safe because that's usually one month out of the year that the property will be vacant right. and, and you don't know it could be for many reasons is either you cannot find the right tenant or the tenant that you had uh it require you know a lot of renovations and they couldn't move in before or right. you, you are just ready to renovate that unit and it might right. take you a month or two to get it done, right? Right. So and there's so, many reasons for it, right? But always um, keep that money aside. Like that's absolutely. what we're saying it. So that's not a reason. We have to get back to our question of like when to buy. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to ask me when to buy, I want to say 10 years ago, 20 years ago. But, you know, we don't have time machines, unfortunately. Yeah. So I would say now. I think there's like uh, we both know enough about real estate to say, any market you're going to, maybe not any market on the planet, but let's just say the GTA, mm -hmm. we know that market is going to continue to do well. Yeah. So we can't promise you 10%. We can't percent, we can't, we can't uh, promise you a rate of how, what we are going to forecast as growth, yeah. but we're pretty confident to say whatever is going to happen in the GTA, there is always people coming in. There's always people needing to buy real estate and buy homes and the rental market right now is crazy good so really if you're interested in buying uh in the gta a rental property really do your numbers because they can work out to be really fantastic and that's what we were waiting for even a exactly. year ago the prices were too high so definitely you have to understand obviously the market no matter what it is in like seller's markets buyer's market that they call it when properties are higher when properties are lower you're always going to have advantages and disadvantages in both times but the the main thing is that you need to crunch the numbers see how much money you have to get in how much you expect that depending on the type of property if you're buying a duplex a triplex you might have more rents but it is also going to cost you a little bit more the other thing that i wanted to discuss is your what skills do you have and how much time availability? Yes. Because absolutely. if you're able to, like if you're a contractor or you're already handy, you know the trade and you're able to work on the property, you're going to save a ton of money. You might be able to buy something that requires a little bit of work for a lot cheaper. And if you put that effort, we, we call it sweat equity, Right. That's right. Yeah. Then you might be able to get the the fair market value to a way higher than what you're actually investing, and either flip the property or put a renter in that is going to make you cash flow, which that's yeah. very important. At least to me, um, I will never get into something that cash flow negative. That means that it's not if, like the rent doesn't pay for everything for all your expenses. What do no. you think about that, Colette? Yeah, I agree with you. The other thing I was going to say too was uh, a couple of things too. The the one thing that I always like to say to anybody, even people who are buying homes for themselves to live in, uh, think of your exit strategy. So if you have that, not just so you, so you have your money lined up, you know that you want to be a landlord, or you know what kind of you know you want to do a fix and flip. With the fix and flip, you know your exit strategy. As a landlord, mm -hmm. you have to say, I'm going to hold on to the property until what happens? The growth of the area gets to a certain point. Let's say you buy it at 500 and you want to sell it when it hits a million dollars, like the value of the house is a million dollars. So to have an exit strategy is very important too, because you can say, oh, I want to hold on to it forever until it stops cash flowing, until I'm done with it, until I retire, until I want to buy my kids a house, whatever that exit strategy is for you, have that down in writing. So you're clear when it comes time to, let's say it has reached a million dollars, and now it's time to revisit that exit strategy to say, okay, why did I say that? What do I want out of that million dollars? And things change. So it's not yeah. like, oh, I can't change my, 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 plan yeah. but at least you have that in writing so you keep yourself in check correct and you need to be flexible because like yes. well, let's say if something happens in your life that make you have to sell the property then you already know okay did i 
reach my goal or I'm closer to the goal. You never know, you know, sometimes an illness makes everything change. Maybe a divorce, maybe separation, maybe a debt in the family. You never know, right? You cannot predict anything. We don't have a crystal ball, right. but if you do make a plan, you can make changes as you go along. Yeah. Right? Exactly. That is uh, basically the advice. If you don't know if you're ready, get in touch with one of us to see if, you know, I can give you an assessment uh, really quick and just give you maybe some ideas that you didn't think about. So please uh, do that if you think that you're ready to buy an investment property. I always tell people don't really go by the news because news is old news. It's already happened, right? And what we want is want to make sure that you, your own world is taken care of financially and that you're ready to take the step. And it doesn't matter when, like, I can't predict that tomorrow the properties are going to go up or going to go down, but you can only look at the immediate future and the immediate past, right? To see, to make a decision. That's how I would do it. Right. I mean, we do have to look at where mortgage rates are. So, so when he says news, like, don't worry about, oh, prices are going up or prices are going down or, you know, this is dropped or this. So that's one thing that I tell my clients, even when they're buying homes too, they're always thinking, oh, what if I buy now? It's the high market. And then I, and I, and you know, then something happens and I have to sell in a low market. The chances are very slim if you are buying for yourself. And this is the thing too. So can I tell a story? Do we have yeah, time? Yeah, of course. So currently, and this has happened a couple times now. So, uh, you know, baby boomers are getting older and they're passing away. So now their kids are coming to me saying, well, you know, I have my parents home. It's paid off. It's worth a million dollars or $2 million. And it's like, oh my gosh, like you think I, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'll sell this property. But then I'm one of those people who say, hey, hold on a second. Do you need the million dollars? What are you going to do with the million dollars? Do you have debt that you, they're like, no, no, we're all financially okay. But if we sell, we're going to have a million dollars. I go, okay, well, guess what? That's not going to really, you know, what are you going to do with that money? Yeah. Instead, why don't you just hold on to it? Because in a year, in two years, in three years from now, it's going to be worth more than a million dollars. Your child is in school. They don't need the money. You don't need to pay yeah. for university or a home for them. You don't know what your life is going to be like. Maybe you want to move into that home. Hold on to it. Rent it for whatever, at least a couple of years. Buy yourself some time. Exactly. Do it. And then that way, if you need, or, or in one case, somebody needs a reverse mortgage. Yeah. Because they don't want to move. They love that house. They grew up in that house. They don't want to sell it. So they move. They're living in that house. And then you think, okay, just hold on to it. Rent the basement out. At least you're getting income. Yeah. But at least you're going to not have that, oh, I shoulda, coulda, woulda. Oh, look at the markets now. And, and now I could have been, you know, three times as rich. Exactly. That's not the reason to sell. Yeah. Or so to buy. The right? most important thing here is to evaluate your current lifestyle. Yes. And if you are able to do it, just like Colette said, I would hold on to the property for however long you can. And yeah. if it's paid off and you are able to put a renter and cash flow, cover all your property taxes and insurance, and maybe make a little bit of money. Yeah. Yeah. This is the perfect situation that you can be in if you are able to do it. Because, you know, also you have to look at people that if they inherit the house and they're already older and they just say, I have no interest, I don't want to get a renter, I just don't trust anybody, right. um, or I don't have the time. So that's why it's important to see your skills, your lifestyle, your right. health, all of that plays really a role into having uh, a property and investment property because it's going to take some management even if you hire a property manager you still have to manage the property manager right so right a yeah. little bit of management there it doesn't matter how you do it but right? honestly if that like ultimately the message here is even though i'm a real estate broker and i get paid when i sell real estate or buy real estate I'm still telling you, I'm not that type of person to say carte blanche, sell your property or buy a property. Call me, talk to me, talk to Araceli, yeah. because that way we can help you answer those questions for yourself to make those informed decisions. 
I honestly think that I don't know if any other real estate agent would even say that to you, don't sell your property. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I kind of second guess myself sometimes, but really if the numbers work for you, it's not about me. Yeah, it's exactly. about you. And, and if you see this value in this property to say, you know, yeah, I can handle renting it. I can handle getting a property manager. Yeah. Maybe you're, you've moved away and you can't physically do it yourself or you're older. It's your home. Get the $5,000 a month in rent, move to a small apartment, yeah. hold on to it and take that $5,000 and travel with it. Enjoy your yeah. life. It's not a life exactly. sentence. It's not, it shouldn't be hard. Yeah. And it remember, enhance your life. Yeah. Sorry. Remember, real estate is part of your financial plan and it's there to enhance your assets, yes. maybe enhance your legacy maybe enhance your current lifestyle if that's necessary you need to that's why i love real estate because you can leverage in many many directions absolutely so when is the best time the best time is when you're ready and it's probably today <laughs> so there's always a way to get in but you just have to have that willingness and be ready right and have a financial plan all of that together in order to, to make that decision do you have any other comments so this and is we can help you we can help you make these decisions that's what we do like that's honestly it's a phone call it's a free consultation whatever you want to ask us yeah. ask us we we need to know what you guys out there are thinking and doing because we can all learn from everybody that's how you know we get through life right yes absolutely so that's awesome well thank you so much and if you think you're ready to buy a property let us know we're here to help and please send us your question make sure to subscribe and you can you know continue to listen to all of the questions that we get and that we answer here on the show yeah. Thank you. We're Claire excited for, for you. Yeah. We're, that's the whole thing. If this doesn't come through, we're so excited for you. We want to not what's best for us, what's best for you. We answer your questions. We love what we do. So please keep watching. Yeah. And we'll see you next week. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for joining Bye. us. Thank you for being here on the show. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when there are more shows available. And if you would like to have more information on how to start investing in real estate, please visit my website at www.arisalihernandez.com. Thank you.